All right, so today, uh, for the last day of our advanced Google class, we need to focus on these features of Google that every webmaster needs to know about. We'll be talking about uh, Google Search Console and Google Analytics. Google Search Console and Google Analytics together, you could call them, as, you could call them the uh, Google Webmaster Tools. Let's say you have a website and you need to know your traffic stats. You need to know who's visiting, where are they visiting from, times of day, all of this great information. Let's say you need to know that to make decisions. Um, these two services from Google provide you those things. The Search Console, in a nutshell, tells you about the health of your site as well as uh, search appearance. How does it look like on a Google search? When someone searches and they find you, what do you look like? Google Analytics is all about data. The hits to your website, the traffic, the most trafficked pages of your site, the uh, most popular web browsers people are using, um, all of that information. So you can get all of this for free from Google. And we need all of this, again, for, for information, information purposes. We'll see, we'll see the details in a bit. But in short, uh, let's say you did take the social media class and you learned about Facebook and uh, Instagram and Twitter and all of that. And let's say you're trying it. You're giving it a shot that for about two months uh, you're trying to tweet something once a week and you're trying to post something on Instagram every four days. Let's say you're trying to be active on social media. How do you know you're being successful? You can use these webmaster tools like Google Analytics to see. I got these number of hits before I started on Twitter and I got these number of hits on my website after I started Twitter. Okay, good. And I'm also seeing that when I posted something on Facebook linking to a page, to two pages on my site, this page over here was more successful than that page. Then I can decide, okay, do I want to try harder to get more traffic to that page or do I want to focus on this page that did get the traffic? You wouldn't know any of that unless you have something like this set up to track your traffic, and your stats, your demographics. Maybe you figure out as you set this up, oh, actually a large portion of the population that visits my website is um, on an iPad. And I never knew that. So once you know that, you can do things like program your website to detect when an iPad user visits and have a pop-up that appears that says, welcome iPad user, you in the next half hour use this coupon for 40% off and then entice people to spend on your website. You can detect all of that. Who's visiting my website from where, with what device, all of that. And this is the modern way of what the, what the marketers were doing all along. Um, you know, when they do, remember the, the, the Pepsi challenge when they had Pepsi, Cola, and Coca-Cola? blindfolded people and they would drink which one do you like better well they were gathering market research which tastes better which do you like better they were gathering data and then having running commercials that said look this is why Pepsi is better this is why this sugar water is better than that sugar water so in the modern uh, version of it all we are collecting data digitally so that we can do something with it that's what we're gonna look at here so we've got two basic websites we're going to work with change the address sometimes so let me look it up here just to make sure we're gonna first go to look at Google Webmaster Tools I'm sorry Google Search Console Google Search Console and its address google.com slash webmasters so let's go to this address google.com slash webmasters
I'm going to be writing this in the notes, so I'll provide that to you at the end of the day. So we'll go to google.com slash webmasters, and then there's nothing to he see here at all unless we sign in. Now, the same login information we used uh, on a previous day, we can reuse. So when we talk about Google Plus and YouTube, you can use that same login information. And you can use that one email address to manage multiple websites. So I'm going to log in with the information of my main information and it'll already be set up because uh, I've already done this for clients. So your screen may look a little different than mine. What you want to do is sign in sign in to your Google account said mine's already set up but yours most likely isn't so let me look over someone's shoulder to see what yours looks like okay so you, you guys are going to see a screen that looks like a little web page holding a wrench let's see so I, I can't show you that but your page looks like a little wrench uh, a website holding a wrench and it's asking you input your website so I'll show you what that looks like in, in a moment, but it's asking you, okay, Google Search Console, this is for you to track, this is for you to see the information that Google is tracking. So you are being asked to add a web address, or actually an Android app, so you can track the data of your Android app. Uh, again, if you don't have a website, that's okay, you can just follow along for a bit uh, and, and to see what we've got here. If you do have a website, you want to put in the, the website address. I'm just going to make one up for the moment. Victor's amazing web bakery.com. You want to put in your your address before we proceed. The thing about Google uh, Search Console, uh, it's been around a while, probably at least a decade, uh, probably even longer than that. And um, there's others that provides similar kinds of services and data. For example, Microsoft has their versions on their Bing search engine. And so, because this one is older, it still kind of uses things in an old-school kind of way. So something to be aware of, when we set up webmaster tools, we have to be very specific. So I'll say here, uh, add the versions of your website. For example, you're going to add, let's say, victorswebsite.com. You're also going to add www.victorswebsite.com. And let's say you've got also a website where you sell products or have some sort of login feature or something. Usually that means you have a secure website. That's HTTPS, victorswebsite.com and https www.victorswebsite.com we, we have to do one at, one at a time doesn't matter which one we do but if you've got secure versions of your website and you'll know you have that when you see the lock on the corner up here of your website and that is not free that security is something that you have to pay for on a yearly basis between about sixty and ninety dollars or so on top of whatever you're paying for your website services so I'm starting to see that some of these website providers are giving you a free year of security it's also known as SSL 
they're giving you a free year of security. And then when you renew, it's probably going to be $60, $70, $90 or something. So for us, what we need at the moment, most likely, you do not have a secure version of your website, so you don't have to do this one yet. But if you have a website, you have the non-WW version and the WW version. We should tell Google about both of our versions of our website so we can track as much data as possible so that we know as much data as possible. So I'm going to start off with, it doesn't matter which, but I'm going to start off with the non-WWW <coughs> version of my website. So type in your address and then click continue. And then here again, this might vary depending on your setup. Uh, we have to now verify that that's your website. Because what we're about to set up here is um, our portal that has a variety of information about our website. What's to stop your competitor from doing this in your name and seeing your data? This is what's to stop them. Verification. It's asking me in my case, and again yours might be slightly different, but it's saying recommended, upload this HTML file. You might see something else that maybe says HTML tag or something else. But there's different methods here. Maybe yours says, oh, we recognize your provider, here's your GoDaddy instructions. Whatever yours says, I'm going to mention all, all of the possible methods and I'll show you what we need to do. But we have to verify here that this is your website because only you have access to this login information, not your competitor. That's how your competitor is stopped from setting this up to see your data. They cannot verify your website and vice versa. You can't verify your competitor's website to see this data of theirs. So one way to verify, this is HTML file upload. This is saying there is a file that is uniquely for you with your own identifier. You have to download this file. It's Google blah 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 .html. And then you have to use some sort of method to upload that file to your website. Now whenever I teach these things, we I build in time to help people individually. And we have lots of time because we have a small class today. So I I will, after I talk about these methods, then I'll help people individually if they want to or if they can do it. But somehow you have to upload this file to your website. Uh, so Google is then going to look for that file on your website once you click verify at the bottom. Again, we'll do this together in just a moment. There's, this is the basic idea, one way to verify. Alternate methods. In my case, I see HTML tag. If I can't log into my site or if I don't know how to upload this file to my website, perhaps I can do this method, which is I add this line of code in the white box, I copy this from Google, I go to my website, and I up and I paste it to my website, come back to Google and click verify. I have to paste this code in a specific place of my site, in the head section of my site, as a meta tag. Again, if this doesn't make sense, we, we're going to break in a little bit for individual help if you need it. But if this makes sense and you're able to do it, on your website, you copy this code, paste it to your website, return to Google, and click Verify. We have this method, domain name provider. Don't even bother with this one. I hardly ever do this one. So if, if this is your recommended method, ignore it. I hardly do this method. I think it's confusing. And I've been doing this for 15 years. So I wouldn't recommend this, this method. It's not really doing very much. It's saying, oh, you've got uh, bluehost.com. Great. Here's instructions on how to add a TXT record. It's, not, it's, it's complicated. So I wouldn't do that method. A couple of other methods that you could do are Google Analytics. This assumes you've got a Google Analytics account already set up. You probably don't. That's one of the things we'll be talking about today in a little while. So if you've got Google Analytics, basically that'll help you vouch for your Google Search Console. 
and same thing with Tag Manager. If you've already got Tag Manager, you can use it to vouch for Search Console. So these are the three different ways to verify. If you're able to do so, and you want to in class, I would recommend to do it. I'm going to take a short break just to give people a chance to do it if you're able to. And if you'd like me to help you out, raise your hand. I'll come on over and we'll see about setting it up together.